My name is Dr. Raj Bazaz. I'm a sports fellowship trained orthopedic surgeon at Western Orthopedics. I specialize in the treatment of shoulder and knee problems. In this video, I will be discussing rotator cuff tears and the available treatment options. From a bony standpoint, the shoulder is a ball and socket joint. The rotator cuff is a set of four tendons that surround the ball and socket joint. The name of the four rotator cuff tendons are the supraspinatus, the infraspinatus, the teres minor, and the subscapularis tendon. The main function of these tendons are to balance the ball and socket and to provide strength at the shoulder, especially for overhead activity. A rotator cuff tear occurs when one or more of those tendons pulls away from its bony attachment. Of the four tendons, the supraspinatus is the tendon that tears most often. Rotator cuff tearing can occur with one specific trauma or over a prolonged period of time due to wear and tear. Rotator cuff tears usually present as shoulder pain. The severity of the pain often increases with activity. Patients can complain of limited motion and weakness to the shoulder. The diagnosis of rotator cuff tearing can often be made by a good quality history and physical exam. A shoulder MRI is usually used to confirm the diagnosis. Once a rotator cuff tendon is torn away from its bony attachment, it will not heal down on its own. That being said, not every rotator cuff tear needs to be treated surgically. There are pros and cons to operative and non-operative treatment. The treatment decision is tailored to the individual patient's symptoms and goals. Non-operative treatment of rotator cuff tears may consist of anti-inflammatory medications, physical therapy, and perhaps a cortisone injection. These options will not fix the rotator cuff tear, but they can provide enough relief where the patient will be satisfied and functional with their shoulder. Operative treatment consists of arthroscopic surgery. First, a full inspection of the shoulders performed to rule out any problems beyond the rotator cuff tear. Then the rotator cuff tendon is reattached to its bony origin. The surgery is all done through small arthroscopic portals, which has the advantages of better surgical visualization, less soft tissue trauma to the shoulder, less post-operative stiffness, and better cosmesis. The surgery takes less than two hours. After one to two hours in the recovery room, patients typically go home. Their arm is in a sling for at least four weeks after the surgery. Home exercises start one to two days after the surgery. Formal physical therapy starts about one week after the surgery and continues for at least three months after the procedure. It takes at least six or more months for the surgically reattached tendon to heal back to bone. Therefore, patients continue to note improvement even up to one year after the surgery. The success of a rotator cuff repair depends on a team approach. As a surgeon, I have to make sure patients are well educated about the shoulder problem before surgery and then perform a technically excellent arthroscopic procedure. After surgery, the patient needs to be engaged in the rehabilitation process. It's the combined efforts of the patient, physical therapist, and surgeon that bring about the great post-operative result that we all want to achieve. To learn more about rotator cuff tears, please visit our website at www.western-ortho.com. Thank you.